Webt Plus Academy for Civil Services. So we do a daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. It's the most important news and editorial of the day that is relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 26th of January. The first important news that is sovereign green bond. This is from the explained page of the Indian Express. Second, India and Egypt strategic partnership. Third, electoral reform after the consultation with the political parties. Fourth, bank may raise deposit rate to compete with their small saving banks. And the last is an editorial fighting the dark. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe APT Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do press a like button. And before I begin the session, today India is celebrating its 74th Republic Day. So I, on behalf of APT Plus, the first news of the day, that is sovereign green bond meaning for the investor and the environment. Something important for Genesis Studies Paper 3 under the subtopic, that is Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource growth and development. So recently, the Reserve Bank of India, that is the RBI has auctions. The auction was conducted by the Reserve Bank of India for the first ever sovereign green bond and some maiden Sovereign green bond auction, a total worth of 8,000 crore rupees. This is for the first tranches that RBA has done. It's a part of total of 16,000 crore rupees of the SGB or the sovereign gold bond that will be auctioned by the RBI in the current fiscal year. And the second green bond auction will conduct on February 9, 2023 by the Reserve Bank of India. So the first was done for 8,000 crore rupees. About green bond, what is green bond? Precisely very important for your prelims examination. You can even expect a question in the mains examination that will be related to the conceptual part. So green bond are the bond that is issued by any sovereign entity, intergovernmental group or alliances and corporate with an aim to proceed that the bond are utilized for the product classifications and that also call for the environmental sustainability. So main concern is that कि environmental को environmental की sustainability को maintain रखने के लिए वैसे projects की classification की जाती है जहाँ पे finances raise किए जाते हैं। The framework for the sovereign green bond was issued by the government on November 9, 2022. Now, which green bonds are there for the auction? So, as per the RBI, the auction of two green bonds with a tenor of five and ten year and total worth of four thousand rupees each for them. And the two bond to be auctioned recently is by the new government of India sovereign green bond till 2028 and new government of India sovereign green bond till 2033. What is the importance of bond? Why the government is issuing the bonds? Why RBI has come up with bond? So over the past few years, green bond have emerged as an important financial instrument to deal with the threat of climate change and related issues. So even if you're writing the significance feature of the importance of the bond, you can highlight this point. Now, according to the International Finance Corporation, IFC, the World Bank Group institutions, the climate change threats community and the economy and it poses risk to agriculture, food and water supplies. So to ensure the sustainability of all these things, there is a great significance of the green bond. Benefits for investors can have bad Green bond offers investor a platform to engage in a good practice, influencing a business strategy of the bond issuers. They provide meaning to hedge against the climate changes risk while also achieving the similar target if it's better return and the investment part. In this way, the growth of the green bond and the green finances also indirectly to the disincentive of the carbon emission projects by the international finance corporations. So definitely in the longer run, in the positive attitudes, the degradations of the consequences by the carbon emissions will be reducing and India's commitment to the various forum at the global level can also be met through the green bonds. Now, when did the government plan for this bond? What was the main roadmap that the government has come up with? 
So in August last year, the government of India has said that it has committed to reduce the emissions intensity of the GDP by 45% by 2005 level by 2030 and achieving 50% of the cumulative electricity installed capacity from the non-fossil based resources. So this is a very important point. Even you can use it as an example in the mains paper per se. Right? Now, with the lines, commitment to significantly reduce the carbon intensity, the union budget 2022 and 23 has made the announcement for the sovereign green bond. So if it is being asked in examination, when was the announcement made? So this was the last year budget. The issuance of the sovereign green bond will help Indian government in tapping the requisite of the finances and potential investor for deployment in the public sector that is aimed for reducing the carbon intensity of the economy. Now, where the proceeds will go, the amount that will be raised, where the amount will be parked. So the government will use the proceeds of the sovereign green board for financing the refine, refinance expenditure in its whole or partly. And this will be for various projects, green projects that the government will be utilizing it. The, among them, the first will be renewable energy, clean transport, energy efficiency, climate change adaptation, sustainable water and waste management, pollutions and prevention control, green building, and in renewable energy, investment will be made in solar, wind, biomass, and hydropower energy projects. Now, moving to the other news, India and Egypt ties elevated to a strategic partnership, something important for gender studies paper 2, under the subtopic bilateral regional grouping and agreement involving India and affecting India's interest. So, recently, India and Egypt has agreed uh, to elevate their bilateral ties in terms of the strategic partnership, this is again a milestone between India and Egypt to strengthen their bilateral relationship. And talking about the bilateral relationship, कौन कौन से ऐसे key pillars होंगे जिन पे दोनों countries की discussion होनी है और अपने खास करके bilateral relationship की बात करें उसे strengthen करनी है. The first is among the political and security cooperations. Second important is segment of economic engagement, scientific and academic collaborations, and wider cultural and people to people contact. Now, the president of Egypt will participate in the Republic Day Parade as a chief guest. He will be the guest of honor in today's Republic Day Parade. And this is for the first time that the Egyptian president has been invited as a guest of honor. The contingent of Egyptian army will also take part in the parade. So this is important for many other competitive examination. 75 year of diplomatic relationship between India and Egypt. So this year is also special with regards to the bilateral ties between India and Egypt, where both countries celebrate 75 years of the establishment for the diplomatic relations. And India has also invited Egypt as a guest country during the G20 presidency, which India is heading this time. And high level political engagement has been an integral aspects of our bilateral ties. Memorandum of Understanding signed in the two countries. Ke beech mein, talking about the specific MOUs that will be signed between India and Egypt. So, five memorandum of understanding signed only covering cultural, corporations, youth matters, cyber security, information and technology, and public broadcasting. The two delegation has launched a commemorative stamp to mark 75 year of bilateral diplomatic relationship between India and Egypt. Moving to the other news, electoral reform only after consultation with the political parties. Something important for gender studies paper 2 under the subtopic government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from the design and implementations. So the union law minister has said that any electoral reform would be carried out only after the consultation with the stakeholder including the political parties. And his remarks is against the backdrop of the election commissions differing from the demonstration of recently prototype that is a remote electronic voting machines. When I R EVM ke baare mein aap discuss kiya. If you have not watched that video, do check it out. Where our basically election commissions ne pehle R EVM ki baat ki thi remote electronic voting machines for the people who are not residing in the native town or the districts will be able to cast their vote. Right. Usi context mein RBI ne khas karke baat kare, just to correct it, this is election commission. So election commission ne categorically administrate deferred kya because of some technical reasons, the prototype was not shown to the political parties, right? So usi context mein union law minister ne kaya it will take a due course of time and finally approval will be taken with the consent of the opposition party as well. And the union law ministry in the constant touch with the election commissions of India, Fourth election reform ki baat ki gai hai, jahan recent amendment to the act facilitating 
voter registration throughout the year will take place. Now, essence of democracy pay government ne zor diya. The law ministry has noted that the consultations and discussion were a symbol of a vibrant democracy. All decisions were taken after a due consultations with support of all political parties. Because in a democracy like India, we cannot have only a single party majority or a ruling party majority. We have to have opposition also in the main front. It's a great achievement that the election process in India and democracy has an active participation of women as well, and a democratic process is continuously increasing in India. Now, moving to the other news, bank may rate. Bank may raise the deposit rate to compete with the small saving banks. Important for general studies paper three under the subtopic Indian economy and issues related to planning, mobilization, resource growth, and development. Reserve Bank of India has said that the rate increase for some of the small saving schemes for this quarter could be tougher for the banks to raise deposit and compel them to lift the rate. Right? This is amid the concern. And even there are a lot of things that RBI is looking into for the rates. Now, in January and March 2023 quarters, the government has raised the interest rate on eight to twelve small saving instrument. They include the twenty minimal basic point, increasing the national saving certificates, Kisan Vikas Patrika, at one one zero basic points higher than one or two three years deposits. One base points के अगर बात करें, this is equal to zero point zero one percent. Rate on the other schemes, now return on the public provident fund and Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana scheme have left unchanged. इसमें कोई changes नहीं की गई है. The public provident fund rate is seven point one percent and Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana is seven point six percent. Interest rate on the saving small saving scheme is fixed at the quarterly with a spread of zero point zero two hundred. Points. It's yield on the government security and comparable maturities. In return, in October 23, the quotes were 44 to 77 percent lower than the formula determined rates, and the PPF and Sukanya Samriddhi scheme would also have earned 7.72 and 8.82 respectively in the previous quarter with the central bank. This is what the RBI has noted. Now I'll tell you what is the benefit and advantages of uh, PPF and how the Sukanya Samriddhi account. Is also helping an individual. So, what is the benefit of PPF account? First, it is risk-free. Multiple modes of deposits are there. Tax benefits are given. Funds transferability facility is also there. Extension is possible. Partial withdrawal from the PPF account is allowed. Loan facility can be availed on a PPF account, and a guaranteed return is there. Now, eligibility. If we talk about it. Resident Indian होने चाहिए. Return guaranteed है. Lock-in period for 15 year. Deposit frequency can be up to 12 year in a year. Tax जो है triple E की category में आती है under the ATC. This is exempt, exempt, exempt category. Contributions up to 5 to 1.5 lakh per year. And avail loan assistance up to availing third to sixth year. Partial withdrawal हो सकती है after it is available the fifth year of the deposits are there. Now, talking about the Sukanya Samriddhi scheme, the account can be opened with a minimum of two fifty rupees. An account can be opened by the parent and guardian with the children age up to ten. Minimum two fifty and a maximum of one point five lakh deposit can be done. Account stand mature at twenty first years of the girl child. An amount will be up to fifty percent of the balance and rest will be attaining after the age of eighteen. The rate of interest is eight point four percent and. The account can be transferred to anywhere in India across the Indian Post Bank in the Indian Post Office. So these are some of the specific features about the Sukanya Samriddhi account scheme. Moving to the editorial of the day, fighting the dark. Something important for general studies paper two under the subtopic Parliament and State Legislature function and conduct of the businesses. Now, what is the important in this editorial? First, talking about the theme part. So, in the theme context, the part of the constitutional process is discussed. Issues will include the background part, political cleverness, challenges for the constitutional process, and the conclusion part. Now, Indian Constitution is standing on the precipice. 
even a lot more thing has to be done in the indian constitution in terms of reform in terms of the essence of democracy that has to be done by the political parties and the parliament so it might be easy to lose sight of an important fact amid the continuing silence of the elections the complex social issues the economical and cultural rhythm of the indian society which is a core essence cumulatively baat ki gayi hai jo forces hai that is degrading the constitutionalism one should not be able to execute the power especially ek koi bhi arbitrary power indian constitution mein jahan ki democratic setup hai for service of operations ke category ke andar aati without being held accountable so accountability in terms of constitutional safeguard should always be there and it is inevitable in the context of the power and procedures listed under the indian constitution no political parties is entirely immune from the charge of subverting the constitutional values so there can be no compromise in terms of the constitutional values public cleverness ki baat ki gayi and even the political cleverness in this part the political cleverness has danger to the current moment that come from four sources pehli sources ki agar baat kare encroachment ki baat ki gayi hai on the constitutional and now represented as directed emerging from the will of the people the process of electoral legitimate that is used as the bullet down for the considering individual freedom and check the balances so there need to have a check and balances between the system actually functioning and the things that is taking place in the present context second is the erosion that appeals in terms of the static efforts which is less significant degradation of some fundamental principle of the constitution is quite comparable with the working ordinary law many areas even after the old progressive victory another now two or important aspects hain third is the erosion uses the inner conflict for the constitutionalism it is silence anomalies against the idea of constitutional itself <coughs> now take for instances a tussle between the executive and judiciary it can also be evident from the inner conflict and anomalies which is evident in the recent times the fourth is the use of formal positions operations had too often taken the form of the positions on law for example the way in which the ed that is the enforcement directorate has been deployed against the oppositions or the administrative law civil society organization is a classical example for the use of formal process and even misuse of power changes for the challenges for the constitutional process pehli challenges there is there will be challenges in terms of the constitutional process india always had a constitutional transitions and anomalies and for all the false indian politician had much clear conceptions about the nature and purpose of the politics and it is also the form of the politics that enlists the worst passions of the civil society now how you can conclude this editorial on this part So the core sign of the constitutional degradations in an erosion of the checking of the balance degradation of individual liberty rules by the purely executive power and control over the civil society are already here. So these balances need to be there in terms of the degradations of individual liberty ruled by the purely executive power and control over the civil society. Now the question is whether we will see more interference by the political process because this has to be transparent in nature. Then only the core essence of democracy. Moving to the MCQ questions of the day. Before I proceed with the questions, just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For the first question, the correct answer is C. For the second question, correct option is C. Today's MCQ for practice carbon watch app has been recently launched by Karnataka, Chandigarh, Madhya Pradesh, or Jharkhand. So you have to check for the correct option. Which among the following is the correct one? The second question is about the Defence Acquisition Council. It is a constitutional body. The Prime Minister of India is the chairperson of the council. Many a times, UPSC tend to directly ask the question about from this council any specific body whether it is constitutional and non constitutional bodies video so practicing a lot more question will give you the clarity about the topic and conceptual understanding about the given topic so this was all about 